Hello, everybody. <laughs> this is Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. It is my honor and privilege to be with you all once again. I am so happy to share with you what the Lord has placed in my heart. You see, it's been a blessing this current year just to know that no matter what we've been faced with, and we've been faced with multiple different challenges. God has given us the ability to overcome every type of challenge, every single opponent, every disturbance that tries to defeat us, that tries to upend us, that tries to shake the very core of who we are. The good news is God has commanded us through his word to make declarations against our opponent. You see, I love the fact that when the enemy comes in like a flood, when God's word declares in the book of Isaiah chapter 59, verse 19, where it tells us, so as the result of the Messiah's intervention, they shall reverently fear the name of the Lord from the West and his glory from the rising of the sun. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him and put him to flight. For he will come like a rushing stream which the breath of the Lord drives. You see, people of God, the Lord protects us from the enemy's tactics and schemes because our adversary cannot and will not invade the peace of God that the Spirit of the Lord provides for his people. Yes, we do know that the enemy is going to try <laughs> And I mean, try to his very best to come in like a flood. And yes, we understand what a flood represents. It represents collateral damage. It represents the washing away of what's valuable. We know that the Bible declares in St. John chapter 10, verse 10, where it says the enemy comes to steal and to kill and to destroy. So the enemy's main objective is to create so much pain, so much agony, so much fear, so much doubt in your life that you will turn your back to the Lord, that you will suffer defeat because of the enemy's mentality. It says here in God's word, when, it didn't say if, but when the enemy comes in like a flood. The declaration that the Lord wants for his people is to speak against this current situation that the enemy presents to your life. He wants for all of his people from around the world is to say to the flood, that the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against the enemy and put him to flight. The Spirit of the Lord, not you, not your friends, not your family, not your mother, not your father, not your job, not your bank account, but the Spirit of the Lord will lift up his standard against the enemy and put him to flight. And this is why the book of James chapter four, verse seven tells us, it tells us to submit yourselves then to God. Starts right off the bat, submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. And you know something, people of God, the enemy hates to retreat. <laughs> he hates to retreat. Because the, when the enemy retreats, 
he realizes that now that you are armed and dangerous, isn't that good news? When he has to take a back seat, when he has to go a different direction, where he has to hide from you because you are armed and dangerous because you have the word of God and you have your relationship with God to make the enemy take flight. Now he has to go away from the opportunity. This is the enemy I'm talking about. He has to go away from the opportunity to defeat you because he is trying now to escape from fighting because he now is in danger. <laughs> See, at one moment, you felt like you were in danger, but when you are armed and dangerous because you have the presence of God, you have God's word on your side, when you have God's protection on your side, when you have God's weapons on your side, now the enemy has to run for cover because now he is in danger. And you know something, people of God, life becomes so sweet <laughs> because now the enemy is no longer on the premises. And what I mean about the premises, he's not in your mind anymore. He's not in your heart anymore. He's not in your thoughts anymore. He is off the premises. He can't affect you. He can't affect your mind anymore. He can't affect your faith anymore because you are now covered by the Lord. He can't intimidate you or put you to shame, make you feel less than. How many out here in the podcast land ever felt like you're just not worthy, you're not valuable, you feel so insignificant? When you Understand that when you resist the devil, he has to leave. He has to flee. When you submit yourself to God, all of a sudden now you have been come, you have come to power. You have been empowered by God now to face your foe. Because you know now who you serve. You know who you are now. You serve an awesome and a mighty God. Now listen, as you can tell, I am so thrilled to be with you, to encourage your heart, to let you know that you are on the winning side. Now listen, before I get started, even though I've already gotten started already, I'm excited. I want to encourage all of our listeners from around the world Please, just to sow a seed into this ministry, Full of Life Ministries. We would love to bless some families that are struggling right now financially, emotionally, mentally. They're struggling with this time and season in their life. And so for every dollar that you will sow into this ministry, it will make a difference. You see, the ultimate goal for Full of Life Ministries is by the end of this year or before Christmas, we want to be a blessing to at least 50 families, whether it's food, whether it's clothes, whether it's a present for the child. We want the, the kids to enjoy this Christmas uh, year. And so please, people of God, please consider giving to Full of Life Ministries. We have a cash app called Full of Life SD. You can sow into that ministry, whatever the amount that the Lord has placed on your heart to sow, please give. You can also support us financially through any of the podcast outlets that are provided for you. The main thing is be prayerful to give your very best gift, not to Pastor Phil, but to God so we can be a blessing to others. Amen? <laughs> Amen. So let's get into our podcast for today or tonight. Now listen, people of God, the Lord impressed upon me the need to talk about a subject that's very necessary in order to achieve victory. 
It is very critical. It is vital that we understand that we are in a spiritual war. We are in a battle with life. Yes, we have COVID. Yes, we have all these different variants that's coming our way. And now we've got the vaccination and now we have to get boosters. And and now we're still seeing people unvaccinated. We see some people who are dying from sickness and disease and from COVID and, and all the different things that we're faced with. Yes, we are up against so much. But it's, in, it's imperative to understand that in order to obtain victory, there has to be a battle. You see, oftentimes we are defeated before the fight actually happens or begins. Either we were not aware of our opponent, and I'm speaking metaphorically, because it's really a spiritual battle that we're talking about that we're up against. These are not something that has to do with a flesh body, but it has to do with the spirit. And Ephesians chapter six, verses 12 through 13 tells us, we aren't fighting against human enemies, but against rulers. Underline the word rulers. We're not fighting human enemies, but we're fighting against authorities, forces of cosmic darkness and spiritual powers of evil in the heavens. Therefore, pick up the full armor of God so that you can stand your ground. (laughs) I want to say that one more time so that you can stand your ground on the evil day and after you have done everything possible to still stand. Either pick up the full armor of God or putting on the whole armor of God has to deal with standing your ground. Ah, the ground is important. Your territory is important that you have to make a stand because the enemy is trying to come in and take over your space. It's about guarding your territory. It's about putting up a resistance against the enemy. It's really about dealing with a foe whose ultimate goal is to destroy the very fabric of your life. So in the book of James chapter four, verse 14, it tells us, listen to this people of God, why you do not even know what will happen tomorrow. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. (laughs) People of God, we only have a short time to live. I want you guys to really understand the significance of what I just said. We have a little window. It's not like we have so much time to do what we want to do. No, we have a short time to live out our purpose. So it is indicative for us to make sure that when these occurrences occur, these moments of truth that happens in one life, that we have to face our opponent. It is up to us to be ready. Somebody say with me, be ready. Say with me, with your big person's voice, I'm going to be ready. And then say in advance. (laughs) We can't get ready, we have to be ready. In advance, before the battle begins. So listen, people of God, the Lord impressed upon me to tell his people, to tell all of our listeners on the podcast land, he wants me to let you guys know that we have to be tactically and spiritually ready to defeat the traps and schemes of the enemy. So today or tonight's episode is entitled 
tactical advantage. <laughs> I want you to write this down on a piece of paper or just take a snapshot in your mind right now and remember the name of this title because a tactical advantage is the attitude of knowing that you are ready for battle. So today or tonight's episode is entitled Tactical Advantage. So listen, in order to have a tactical advantage against the enemy, number one, you have to understand what your opponent is going to try to do to defeat you. So to make it plain for our listeners, just remember this, examine your weaknesses. <laughs> I want to say that one more time, examine your weaknesses. For some people, they have to deal with, with food. <laughs> because that's a struggle. That's one of their weaknesses. For others, it has to do with fear. For somebody else, it has to do with sex. Not just sex, but it has to do with the lust of the flesh. And for many of us, it has to do with, deal with uh, insecurities. Whatever your weakness is, you know what your weakness is. Whatever that is, it is time to examine your weaknesses. Now listen, 2 Timothy, the first chapter, <clears throat> and the seventh verse tells us, For God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love, and self-control. Second Timothy, first chapter, verse seven. God gave us a spirit, not of fear, but of power and love and self-control. Second Timothy, the second chapter in the 22nd verse tells us, it says, so flee youthful passions. <laughs> Weakness, right? Then it goes on to say, and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. Isaiah, the 40th chapter and the 29th verse, speaks about when you are spiritually ready to faint because of the pressures of life. This scripture, this scripture lets us know that God will step in and provide exactly what we need in order to be strong. It says he gives. <laughs> he gives power to the faint. That's a weakness. And to him who has no might, that's a weakness. He Jehovah Jireh God increases strength. This is how we gain a tactical advantage against the enemy. Youthful passions, the spirit of fear. All of these things are part of our existence. You know what makes you weak. And so you have to understand what your opponent, the enemy, is going to try to do to defeat you. He's not going after your strengths. He's going after your weaknesses. And I say weaknesses, plural, because we do have many weaknesses that God wants for us to make sure that we are prepared and that we will gain a tactical advantage over the enemy. So when the enemy brings a temptation to you, you can say like Jesus told the devil, get thee behind me, Satan. Get thee behind me, not in front of me, not alongside of me, but get behind me so I can move forward. It is imperative that we have to understand that examinations are required in order to make sure that you are prepared for battle. Doctors often put up 
uh, displays of your inner being. They take they take uh, X-rays and they examine your body and they they do blood work and they take your pulse and they want to make sure everything is ready for life, ready for you to function in life. It's the same thing so that we have to present ourselves before God so God can expose what's making us weak. And so God's word oftentimes will give you the truth of where you are. So then now with the help of the Lord, he helps you along these areas of weaknesses so you could become strong through him. Amen. So number one. Examine your weaknesses. Understand that God did not give you any spirit of fear, but he's given you power and love and self-control. And then number two, in order to have a tactical advantage against the enemy, you have to develop a strong prayer life. Now, 1 John, the fifth chapter, the 14th through 15th verse, it says, this is the confidence Underline that word confidence. This is the confidence that we have in our relationship with God. If we ask for anything in agreement with his will, it's not about your will, but it has to do with the agreement with his will. If we ask anything in agreement with his will, he listens to us. If we know that he listens to whatever we ask, we know that we have received what we ask from him. You see, people of God, confidence is based on our relationship with God. Without having a strong relationship with God through prayer, we lose our tactical advantage because now we're trying to do things in our own ability in our own strength. And many times we are defeated before the battle occurs. We were negligent. We are negligent. So many days, so many days out of the week, so many weeks out of the month, so many months out of the year, we have become negligent with our, with our relationship with God. And the enemy, I want you guys to hear this. The enemy can pick up on things about your life when you have not spent quality time with God. The enemy can hear it in your voice. He can sense it. He can sense that we've been lacking in spending quality time with God in prayer because of the way we think because of the way we speak. And that's how you can become vulnerable for an attack. So it is important. It is imperative that we gain confidence through our relationship with God through prayer. Because the Bible declares, if we ask for anything, it didn't say some things, it says, If we ask for anything in agreement with his will, he listens to us. If we know that he listens to whatever we ask, we know that we have received what we ask from him. So understand, people of God, develop a strong prayer life so you can gain a tactical advantage. And lastly, in order to have a tactical advantage against the enemy, just simply put your trust in God. (laughs) Simply put your trust in God. Proverbs, the third chapter, verses five through eight. It tells us, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Don't rely on your own intelligence. Know him in all your paths and he will keep your ways straight it goes on to say don't consider yourself wise (laughs) fear the lord not fear the lord but 
reverence the Lord, respect the Lord, and turn away from evil, then your body will be healthy and your bones strengthen. <laughs> That's the good news. Put your trust in God. Stop relying on your own intelligence, on your own gift, on your own abilities. God already knows what's best for you. So in closing, let's understand and embrace that we serve a God who wants to equip us with everything that pertains to life and godliness. We are on the winning team. That's the good news. We are on the winning side. But winners never rest on their past accomplishments. You see, the Apostle Paul in Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 through 16, and this is what he says. He says, brothers and sisters, I myself don't think I've reached it, but I do this one thing. I forget about the things behind me and reach out for the things ahead of me. The goal I pursue is the prize of God's upward call in Christ Jesus. So all of us, all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. <laughs> all of us who are spiritually mature should think this way. And if anyone thinks differently, God will reveal it to him or her. Only let's live in a way that is consistent with whatever level we have reached. You see, you will achieve a tactical advantage when applied because the Lord will create the greatest opportunity of fulfilling your purpose. So get ready. <laughs> Get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get yourself ready through your relationship with Christ. And I can assure you, I can promise you that your life will never, ever be the same. In Jesus' name, let us pray. Bow your heads with me if you get it, if you could do that right now for me. Because God wants to do something special in your life. Father God, in the name that's above every name, we give you praise. We thank you for all of your many blessings. We thank you for all of your tender mercies. Lord God, as the year comes to an end, we realize that this battle is never going away. We are faced with so many things that we're just trying to navigate through life. And oftentimes, God, we get frustrated. We, we feel so, so lonely sometimes. Sometimes we just question things and, and we're looking for answers. But Lord God, help us to understand that we are on the winning side, that you have provided for us everything that we need to win in life. So Lord God, I pray for every listener under the sound of my voice that you will just continue to bless them and to strengthen them and to just hold them up, oh God. And that God, that you are our protector. You are our peace. You are a great healer of our mind, of our hearts. So Lord God, I ask you, O oh God, to first forgive us of all sin, cleanse us, wash us, forgive us for the thoughts that we've had, some of the words that we've said, some of those things that we did not mean. God, cleanse, cleanse us, wash us, blot out every transgression that we've committed against you. Help us, O oh God, to be tactically sound that we will walk in your authority and that the weapons that you've given to us to defeat the enemy are weapons that will cause the enemy to flee and to leave our premise 
to leave our space so we can receive your peace and live in your peace and thrive in your peace. I pray for every listener who will give financially to this ministry, that they will be prayerful so we can help those who really need who need to see your light shine, oh God. So bless every person who will give to this ministry, Full of Life Ministries. And Lord God, I pray that you will continue to strengthen and save those who need to be saved, deliver those who need to be delivered, and set the captive free so they can really live the life that you created for all of us. We praise you in advance for what you're going to do. And we ask all these blessings In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Well, people of God, that is it for today or tonight. The episode entitled Tactical Advantage. I'm Pastor Phil with Full of Life Ministries. I hope and pray that you really did enjoy this uh, particular episode. Allow for these words to just minister to your needs. If you need to listen to this episode over and over again, allow God's word to speak to you. Because it's designed for you so you can understand who you are and whose you are. You are a child of God. Blessings to everyone who listens to Full of Life Ministries. Pray for us as we pray for you and love on you. And let's continue to do this in Jesus' name. Bless you, people of God. See you next week. God bless.